This audio production was made in collaboration with Audible Anarchist. This is Anarcho Blackness by Marquise Bay. Notes toward a black anarchism. I think this was published with AK Press. Introduction. The endeavor into what might be understood as black anarchism, a black anarchism that is indebted to and circulates endemically within black, queer, and trans feminisms, is a brief attempt to crystallize, but also depart from tenets found in established black anarchism, anarcho-feminism, and classical anarchisms, the likes of Peter Kropotkin, Pierre Joseph Perron, Mikhail Bakunin, and the like. While my aim will be to articulate a theoretical praxis for black anarchism through what I will deem an anarcho-blackness springing from, but also supplementing, and even disagreeing with, self-described black anarchists, uh, in this meditation, a pamphlet of sorts, I do not take as my sole purpose to demonstrate a fidelity to black people who are anarchists, nor must I state is my goal to recover black people who demonstrated anarchic tendencies and induct them into the folds of anarchism. I want, in fact, to resist the penchant to absorb various thinkers into the folds of anarchism. I do not want to claim them necessarily as anarchists when they do not avow themselves anarchists. Rather, my intent is a refigurative project to express what anarchism might be, what it might look like when encountering a sustained engagement with blackness in general and black queer and trans feminisms more specifically. In this sense, I take a propelling force that, quote, anarchism, like anything else, as Hannibal Abdur Shakur notes, finds a radical new meaning when it meets blackness, end quote. The anarchism of, say, Bakunin is no longer anarchism proper when it meets blackness. To clarify, there are certain threads that connect different iterations of anarchism, making them all, in some sense, anarchist. Uh, For example, emphasis on mutual aid, direct participation, anti-authoritarianism, etc. But to meet with blackness entails that anarchism undergoes a shift in focus and tenor. Classical anarchism, for example, rested on an axiomatic commitment to the dismantling of the state and capitalism as a defining factor for anarchist sentiments. But this foundation often does not consider the racialization and gendering of either of them, nor how hierarchization bears a racialized and gendered texture. To be sure, this project will advance beyond mere finger-pointing of the racist and sexist habits of anarchists past, an argument that many black anarchists and anarcho-feminists have made to a valid, but to be frank, boring and expected effect. As I will discuss momentarily, the dramatic shift entailed in this iteration of black anarchism is, perhaps more accurately, practicing an anarchism that goes unchanged. It is anarchism as expressed through and necessarily corrupted by the radicality, the lawlessness, the mutinous primordiality of blackness. If indeed, as remarked upon by Dana M. Williams, the term... Quote, the term black anarchism implies an interaction between black and anarchism. End quote. Anarcho-blackness, notes toward a black anarchism, dwells in the texture of that interaction. This text is an effort to mine that interaction, mine what that interaction entails. What happens to blackness when circulating with and through anarchism? What happens to anarchism when being acted on, by, and in blackness? What is yielded in this interaction, an additive sum, a multiplicative product, an exponential result? Neither anarchism nor blackness can be what it once was, which is itself an unsettled open question after colliding in a critical generative intimacy with one another. So I attempt here in this text to illustrate a facet of that intimacy. That intimacy is anarcho-blackness. It is a black queer feminist anarchism that disorders the various mechanisms that hierarchize hierarchize, that's how you pronounce that, circumscribe and do violence to the moments that do life on the outskirts of order, those moments of, as it were, unfettered and ungoverned sociality, an anti-colonial sensibility. 
Anarcho-blackness and black anarchism more broadly is an anarchism of another type to purloin Gandhi. It is another type that recognizes its intimacy with anarchism as conventionally understood, but it revises anarchism, anarchizes anarchism, remixes and samples anarchism to produce something distinct but very much indebted. Anarchism is to be rightly understood as a more radical theoretical praxis than Maoism, socialism, or nationalist revolution, because from the black radical perspective of quasi Balagoon, quote, the goals of anarchy don't include replacing one ruling class with another, neither in the guise of a fair boss or as a party, end quote. Indeed, it is the name for the radical world-making project that, unlike the aforementioned political ideologies, refuses the quote-unquote socialization process that makes exploitation and oppression possible and prevalent in the first place. Balagoon continues. Black anarchic notes, as the chapters herein de-emphasize representational politics as if having black people as one's oppressors makes oppression more bearable. We know that oppressors never have a problem finding black leaders to condemn their blatant disregard for life. When researching anarchism and black people's relationship to it for this book, there is a notable dearth of self-described black anarchists. Perhaps the reason for this, I pondered, even though the history of black radicality is a history of anarchic thought, is because blackness necessarily alters anarchism's capacity. Because what I am designating as anarcho-blackness, as the operative modality for black anarchism, is no mere incorporation of black people into the folds of anarchism, i.e., add and stir. I am thus designating black anarchism's anarcho-blackness as a black feminist critique and taking up of anarchism, asserting that one, the black in front of anarchism is to be understood as not a mere marker of identity, but as a political and capaciously politicized affixation. It designates more of a mode and posture of reading, engaging, and undermining the tenets upon which the hegemonic sociality rest. 2. Inherent to black feminist mobilizations is ground disturbing, and thus to disturb grounds, even its own grounds, is a necessary competent of the project at hand. Anarcho-blackness thus designates the disturbing of anarchism's ground, which capacitates what anarchism can be and who it can liberate. And three, processes of racialization and gendering must be at the forefront of any and all radical politics, more specifically the radical work that queerness and gender non-normativity do as expressed in black queer and trans feminisms is anarchic par excellence in the dismantling of racial and gender hierarchies too often overlooked or merely glossed in a classical anarchism is a fundamental rebuking of authoritarian rule, hierarchies, determination from without, and injustice. The titular anarcho-blackness of this volume moves toward an anarchic social life uh, in that it it is delinked from oppressive forms of governance and rule. This is why each of the chapters in this book are prefixed un. This volume's commitment to anarchism stretches to subjective, intersubjective, discursive, systemic, and historical realms via a fundamental commitment to being and becoming unraced, ungendered, unclassed, unruled and unbound. These notes toward a black anarchism argue that oddly enough, it is not necessary to find all the black people who are anarchists and the anarchists who are black people and roll out their writings and thoughts as a definitive statement on what constitutes black anarchism proper. Rather, the reason why this volume is titled Anarcho-Blackness is not simply, and not simply black anarchism, aside from the fact that the Black Rose Federation's reader black anarchism already exists, is because affixation of blackness is itself an anarchic extension and disruption of political ideologies like anarchism and Marxism and socialism. We may not need a clearly defined black anarchism because 
to anarchically push anarchism, as it were, is to introduce it to a blackness, or more specifically, an anarcho-blackness that radicalizes any and every political ideology that moves toward liberation and freedom. Whereas historians like Carl Levy, or Levy, have focused on the isms of anarchism. Anarchism is a defined social movement that arose in the late 19th century with clear originators. I focus instead on the anarcho, the prefixal thrust and spirit, as it were, of anarchic tendencies and modalities. Focus on the anarcho, it is to focus on a world-making sensibility that I am interested in, not a particular political cadre of writings and movements. Anarcho-blackness in a position to, not rather than, black anarchism does not dwell in delineating criteria for a discernible black anarchism as a movement, but concerns the variegated modalities, methodologies, habits, trends, thoughts, and imagine, imaginaries that might be given to an anarchic, which is to say unruled, non-coercive, coalitional affinities and textures for being with others. Anarcho-blackness expresses what might be understood as a black anarchism insofar as it designates a gratuitous disorder that engenders the possibility of living unbounded by law, which is to say unbounded by violence and circumscription. Black anarchist histories attest to how, in imagining what comes after the collapse of the state, one should not design this future beforehand as if we know what we will need. Black anarchism is critical in the destructive sense that it unclothes fallacies and injustices too, though not though too, though it is aspirational, searching and hoping for other modes of life and living them living that depart from this. Contrary to the Marxian castigation of anarchists as v vitiating the world only to imagine one that cannot exist, anarchists writ large, but more importantly, anarcho blacknesses conceptualization of black anarchism specifically demands the impossible. Okay. The impossible is the name for the word outside of or after or differently within as an anarchic destruction of the racial and sexual capitalist state. This world outside is black or lawless. This world outside is anarchic or stateless, radically liberated. I take my cue in this form, an etymological source, one from the first recorded users of Uses of anarchy comes in 1539 from Richard Taverner, who writes, quote, This unlawful liberty or license of the multitude is called anarchy. End quote. Anarchy becomes more than what classical anarchists note the negation of a head or chief without a ruler or leader, stateless, though Taverner surely connotated his usage of anarchy negatively one could read this iteration in a way that precisely captures how the anarchism of black anarchism seeks to operate that is an unlawful liberty is a freedom or liberation that arises not as a product of a bestowal by the state Unlawful liberty is an illegal liberty, a liberation achieved by other means not beholden to the, juridis the jurid juridical sphere or a general lawfulness. Perhaps this liberty as such, liberty that is taken without recourse or appeal to governmental agencies, we grant our own license to be free. And it is multitudinous, a mass, a heady swarm that takes this liberty and license, a promotion of disorder in as much as it is an in anarchy that refuses to cater to order as an instantiated by regimes of government governance the prefix anarcho an index of all of this embraces a political disorder begotten by an encounter with blackness's troubling ethos its radicalization of radicality the history of blackness in short is a history of disruption toward freedom how anarchic
The idea to write about black anarchism came from a question I received during a Q&A session following a reading of my first book, Them Goon Rules, Fugitive Essays on Radical Black Feminism. The student, a white woman who studies anarchism, asked about the dearth of self-identified black anarchists, even though so much of what she's read about the black radical tradition and black feminism expresses anarchic sentiments. I received her question genuinely. She was curious, yearning for a way to bring strands of leftist thought and politics together in a way she had not yet encountered. I could not provide her a substantive answer. What I mustered was in short and elaborated and extended, I don't know. Subsequent to the reading, a colleague of mine, a black man, scholar of 20th century African American literature, apprised me uh, of some of the work being done by the admittedly few black anarchists out there. He named the Black Rose Federation Zoe Samudzi, the latter being quite foundational for my meditation in this text. We came ultimately to the question, does there need to be a black anarchism? That is, if black radicals are doing work that is anarchic without calling themselves anarchists, does there need to be a proliferation of a discernible black anarchism? It is a valid position that one must not be overly concerned with whatever someone calls themselves an anarchist or what have you. Such a concern mimics an experience I had in college, being obsessed with calling myself and making sure others called themselves feminists to the detriment of a concern with whether one did feminist work. Make yourself legible to me and others on terms not your own. This sentiment implies. But it may be precisely the point the anarcho to blur such legibilities, finding freedom in escaping political ontologies. One does not, in short, need to call oneself a black anarchist to be doing black and anarchic work, and the work is where our interest should lie. Nevertheless, though one does not need to deem themselves, such does not mean that one cannot or should not. Two, apart from the work being Part of the work might be in the declaration, an unwavering commitment to be identified as and through a denigrated political subjectivity and a steadfast rejoice over occupying at least a titular subversive relation to the state. Furthermore, there might be some utility in articulating not so much a black genealogy of anarchism, but a differently inflected mode of relating to being amongst others that finds radical expression at the nexus of black and anarchist. To make blackness and anarchism meet is doing a particular kind of work, and that work when acknowledging the inherent black queer feminist resonances of theorizations of blackness is much less likely to be done when simply following the classical strain of anarchism. To follow and deviate from the beaten and unbeaten path of history of blackness, a history that is always already queer, always already black feminist, and most fundamentally always and already trans and non-normative, is to bring an archive of radicality that breaches all major confines of sociality and subjectivity. If blackness does the does the work of disturbing assumed grounds that make things legible in a hegemonic way. This shares an affinity with the queer and the feminist projects of undoing and dislodging gender and sexual normativity. There is thus an overlapping circulation happening with blackness, queerness, and feminism. It is for these reasons that it might be necessary to move toward a black anarchism. So while I am was unable to answer the student's question adequately during the Q&A, I've committed to giving her something of a response in the form of this text. I am still unsure why there are few who describe themselves as black anarchists, despite the strong resonance, resonances of anarchism within black feminism and the black radical tradition, but this is the beginning of an answer. I am unsure if I would call myself an anarchist, nor am I certain that I care about whether others do so. Perhaps I am, the consequences of which I own, but my concern is in doing anarchic work. I am concerned with how to bring about an anarchic world and commit to an emancipatory, liberatory vision that somehow, somewhere gets entwined with one's subjectivity. I am concerned with treading anarchic ground unsettling the world as is and bringing about something radically different, an immersive rebuking of capitalism, white and cis male supremacy, imperialism. 
such a world if we are to tread the whispered roads of Kropotkin and Cedric Roberson, Emma Goldman and Zoe Samudzi is anarchic in a robust sense. I want to live and do and become that, irrespective of whether those who bring about that world have declared themselves anarchists. That subjectivity, the performative product of committing to anarchic work, is what concerns me. If subjectivity implies an anarchist identity, lovely. If not, so be it. But subjectivity is the terrain on which anarchic aims are struggled over. So that must be my concern. This has been a production of Audible Anarchist. You can find more Audible Anarchist on YouTube.